Hi, I'm Tim Hill with Tan Books. Thanks for joining us, and I'm happy to be joined by author Philip Campbell. His new book, The Story of Mary, uh, should be very edifying for plenty of youngsters out there who can learn plenty about the story of Mary. Philip, thanks for being with us. I'm very happy to be here talking about the Blessed Mother. And I know you've been talking about this. You have a tan course attached to this. You've uh, written the textbook and the workbook. I guess the, the first question I have for you, Philip, is why? Why the story of Mary? After we did a story of civilization and story of the church, uh, which were the first five volumes in the story of series, we started thinking about uh, the role of the Blessed Mother in Catholic spirituality and how, how central she is and how Marian devotion is such a rich part of our, uh, of our Catholic heritage. And we thought that it might be good to use this format to try to give a comprehensive educational view of the Blessed Virgin Mary's role in Catholicism for that same young age range that we target Story of Civilization to. So this is like your lower elementary to middle school, uh, maybe like age eight to 13-ish. So we're just looking to, uh, to yeah, to really give a, a comprehensive view of Marian spirituality to that age group using the model of Story of Civilization, which has been so successful. Sure. Perfect for my eight-year-old and 10-year-old. Uh, mm -hmm. When I'm communicating with them, when I'm trying to teach them anything, sometimes I've, I find it uh, a bit of a struggle, anything that's very complicated to, to simplify it and yet to not uh, miss really important parts. Did you, yeah. how, how did you balance that in, in this book? Oh, that was, um, that was a big challenge. Uh, there were some, you know, you can get into aspects of Marian theology that are very complicated, or at least, you know, challenging to explain to a, a young audience. And so I was always trying to think of analogies and um, examples from everyday life to try to kind of put these important ideas into a framework that younger minds could grasp easily. And there was a couple times where I had to have a uh, phone call with a theologian or something to say, like, is this an accurate representation of what we're trying to uh, to put forward? And so in the end, I think it all worked out. But of course, I've been a, I've been a teacher for many years. I'm, I'm kind of used to being in that mindset of having to take complex ideas and uh, and, and put them into a, a medium that that younger minds can grasp. So it was a bit of a challenge, but uh, not insurmountable. And I'm very happy with the finished product. Anything particular, any of the particular stories in the story of Mary stick out to you? Oh, there's so there's so many. Um, like, I really love the story. Uh, so uh, I guess we should preface this by talking about this, the structure of the story of Mary and what it, you know, because there's many ways you can consider the Blessed Mother. You could you could look at just the theology of Marian devotion, right? Like, what are the doctrines we believe about the Blessed Mother? You could look at her from a cultural perspective, like how has devotion to the Blessed Mother influenced the development of cultures in, say, the Philippines or Latin America or medieval Europe. You could look at apparitions. We could talk about Lourdes and Guadalupe and, and things like this. Or we could talk about Our Lady in the Bible, um, you know, Old Testament foreshadowings, uh, her life in the New Testament, early church traditions about her. So Mariology is such a huge um uh, a, a huge thing. And so when I was talking to Tan about first writing this book and I, I said, what, what angle do you want me to take here? And Tan was like, all of it. <laughs> like we want you to get all of it in there. So this book is very comprehensive. It's not just, and that's what I think makes it different than other books about Mary. It's not just like, here's what the church believes about Mary. It's not just like, here's some stories of Mary's life. It's everything. It's Old Testament symbolism her life according to the Gospels, uh, early church traditions, all the great ecumenical councils, the apparitions, the devotions like the rosary, the brown scapular, miraculous medal. Uh, it talks about cultural things like feast days and popular celebrations. It even talks about uh, companies and cities and geographical landforms dedicated to our Blessed Mother. It has apologetics about Mary. So it's very comprehensive. So getting back to like my favorite story, there was so much that I learned about the Blessed Mother. But I think my favorite was probably the chapter on Our Lady of Czestochowa, which was this famous famous uh, Polish icon of Our Lady that is, is famous for having 
slashes on its face. It's it's Mary holding uh, baby Jesus, and there's some sword marks on the face of the icon, and this dates back to in the late Middle Ages when um, the monastery at Yasnogora was attacked by bandits, and they made off with the uh, they made off with the icon, and uh, in the process of stealing the icon, it was it was slashed across the face by their their swords in anger, and then they left it in a field, and it was eventually recovered. Um, and I really love that story, and I had a great time writing the the historical fiction vignette describing that uh, th that story. So there's so many cool things. Um, there's so many there's so many tender tender stories uh, of of Mary devotion. There's these sweet stories like Catherine of Siena as a little girl floating floating down the stairs while she prays Hail Marys, and her parents you know freaking out seeing her levitating. And then there's like a lot of really epic stories, battles like the Battle of Lepanto or, uh, or various things like that, or the assassination attempt on, on John Paul II, which we talk about as well. So um, it, it's, it's really great. It encapsulates all the, 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 the tender, sentimental stories about our Blessed Mother, and then a lot of like the, uh, the epic, grand, civilization-altering events that have been related to Mary as well. Wow, with all the, the wealth of knowledge that you're imparting all the the stories all the just all the stuff that's in there <laughs> uh what do you hope young readers take away from this most well i <clears throat> so i myself when i was younger did not really understand marian devotion that well i was i was baptized catholic when i was very young but i didn't really i didn't have any formation in the church really i kind of had to relearn these things as an adult uh and even as a young adult learning the faith, I did not really understand the importance of marrying devotion. I mean, it was there and I accepted it, but it was kind of like a, kind of like an add on, like an extra, you know, to my Catholic faith. And then gradually over the years, I came to really see why the saints recommend marrying devotion so highly and the important place that Mary plays in our faith, both as an intercessor, as someone who actually obtains graces on our behalf, but also as a as a symbol, as like a role model um, of, of of motherhood, of piety, of all these different virtues, and so it really made a big difference in my life. And um, and I think you know maybe for many other Catholic uh, young people, maybe they've been raised with Marian devotion, maybe they've been raised you know praying the Rosary or wearing the scapular, but maybe a lot of the rich symbolism or the history or the theology of these things, maybe there's like gaps that need to be filled in in their brain, you know. So I'm kind of hoping that this book will help young people to make Marian devotion their own. So it's not just something that their parents are telling them, here, we pray the rosary because we're Catholic, where they really start to kind of take ownership for their own love of the Blessed Mother and grow in that, um, that devotion that St. Louis de Montfort says is the fastest way to, uh, to uh, the heart of our Lord. So that's really what I'm hoping they will get out of it. That's what I've gotten out of Marian devotion. And so kind of hidden within all these pages, there's maybe like echoes of my own story, you know, as I discovered these things. So, uh, yeah, I just uh, I just really hope that that young people will take a look at, even if they've known her their whole lives, to take a look at her with with fresh eyes and kind of learn how influential and important she is in the Catholic faith. And she's not just an add on that she's really there at the at the heart of our spirituality. You know, I think as a cradle Catholic myself and uh, growing up around a lot of Protestants, I think Mary might be the most misunderstood part of Catholicism in a lot of ways, or certainly uh, one of the main ones. Uh, have you encountered that as well? And do you think this can uh, help dispel some of those notions? Yes, I, I encountered that in my own life from my, my Protestant friends. I encountered that from myself, where because most of my Christian friends growing up, oh, I mean, actually all of them were Protestants. So I heard like my understanding of Mary was like filtered through a Protestant lens, you know, and I really had to delve into Catholic sources to understand what the church taught and did not teach about the Blessed Virgin Mary. So in the book, you will find, you'll find a couple chapters that are very apologetical in nature where they literally say, this chapter is about Marian apologetics. If they say this, here's a good thing to point out. But then even throughout all the chapters that aren't apologetical, there's constant like explanations of what the teaching is, why we believe it, um, trying to use helpful analogies to explain it, analogies to explain the Immaculate Conception or to explain 
the idea of Mary as a mediatrix and these various ideas. So I think in a certain sense, the whole book is apologetical in that it's, it's helping students to understand and explain um, what we believe about the Blessed Virgin. But yeah, there's specific chapters dedicated to answering Protestants as well. Story of Mary, it's a textbook, uh, the workbook. I opened it up, thumb th thumbing through it a little bit earlier. Looks like lots of, of great activities to to engage kids as well. Yeah, and that's that's been a hallmark of all the story of books from Story of Civilization on down is we've tried to not just produce a, a textbook, but, but to have the workbook. And then uh, we also have an audio drama with Story of Mary. And uh, like with the other story of uh, books, I, I came down to Tan, Tan Studios there at Belmont Abbey and I recorded a series of lectures. I think there's 35 of them, one for each chapter where I offer like kind of like an eight to 10 minute synopsis of, of the chapter. So there's all sor sorts of components to help make this a very rich um, catechetical piece of material. So you could read this for your own edification. You could read this as part of a church history curriculum. This could also be implemented in like a formal religious instruction setting um, to, to, you know, if it, if it was part of religious education or something like that, it would be ideal. So there's lots of flexibility with how it can be used, especially with all the different components, the workbook, the audio drama, the videos, etc. And with the eight and 10 year old boys at home trying to teach them anything, I know I can use all the help I can get. So uh, I, I thank you in trying to reach them in different ways. I know that is very valuable. And I'm, I'm sure you found that in your teaching career as well. Yeah, a teacher really needs a full arsenal of tools to reach kids in many different ways. It's it's true, and I think that's that's Tan's view as well. It sounds like the the fitting way to end this conversation then would would be a hail Mary. Why don't, why don't you lead us, Philip? All right, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Philip. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And I, I pray and I hope that, that this work is blessed and that uh, and that it goes out to a lot of kids and, and uh, accomplishes what I what I hope it will. Mm -hmm.